What is going on everyone and welcome to a very special video on my channel now as it is the 29th of February leap year day 2020 an extra day of course I thought I'd give you an extra long video as you can probably tell by extra long I mean very very long so sit back relax and let's get into a compilation of my best ever entitled parents stories This is entitled parents the movie Relatives invited for dinner assume they're staying the night. My dad is the only member of my family with whom I have a close relationship, as he is the only one who accepts my choice to remain child free and focus on my career and travel. As for my stepmom, stepbro, and his wife, uncles, aunts, and cousins, all of them have given me heck for my lifestyle. I'm in my mid 30s now, and ever since I'd entered my late 20s, they began badgering me to get married, preferably to a man my father chooses for me. I'm Indian, so you can. Can imagine how this goes i got the usual bull bingos who will take care of you when you're old you're selfish for only thinking about yourself you need to marry and breed because that's what women do around four years ago i finally got sick and tired of them and decided to ignore their calls and texts i've only maintained low contact with my stepbrother because he was not quite as horrid as the others i was never close with these people to begin with so it wasn't difficult for a while they took to harassing my dad to get him to get his daughter in line but he shot them down by saying that it was my life my decisions at the time when this incident took place a certain crisis had arisen in my extended family one that directly affected my dad i don't wish to go into details but it compelled me to interact with these people again so my stepmom's sister her husband their teenage son along with their grown son his wife and their toddler came to our city to discuss matters my dad and i decided that we can all chat at my place as it's close to the airport so all of these folks along with my dad stepmom stepbro and sister-in-law and their baby are at my place we all ate dinner and talked about the issue at length however it was quite an ordeal for me as i had to constantly tell off the toddler who is my stepmom's great niece as she kept trying to grab my cat and dogs or make loud noises at them i asked her parents to intervene but they just laughed it off my pets are very well behaved but are not used to being around kids especially if they're annoying little brats whose parents refuse to discipline them as soon as the discussion was over my stepmom's sister asked Asked which of the bedrooms was for them i was caught a bit off guard and asked her what she meant her husband chimed in and asked rather demanded that i get two of the bedrooms ready for their family we'll be spending the night here oh and breakfast would better be served before 8 a.m in the morning as we don't want to miss our flight he said this with the matter of factness of a seasoned parasite this was my breaking point not once had i indicated that they would be staying at my place i just offered to host them for dinner once that's it even my dad was shocked i told them very bluntly that i'm not particularly fond of their family and do not feel comfortable letting them spend the night also how the heck did they get this ridiculous idea anyway now my stepmom flared up she no longer speaks to me directly so she began asking my dad why his daughter could not put up family members in her home for just one night how can she be so selfish my stepbrother's kid chose this exact moment to start bawling so my sister-in-law told her to stop yelling as the baby was getting upset thanks kid i told everyone in a firm voice that we discussed what we were supposed to discuss and it was time for them to leave my stepmom and her sister walked out grumbling everyone else followed the toddler's mum asked if she and her kid could pet my dogs i just said no with a straight face which seemed to annoy her the baby was still bawling like a champ so no one was able to say anything else i never even wanted these people in my home to begin with so letting them spend the night was obviously out of the question if they had asked beforehand and asked politely then i would have considered it but i refuse to be a doormat for buttholes who can't keep their entitlement in check well good for you i could understand if it was your mum and dad that wanted to stay but your stepmom's sister there's no blood relationship there at all and also they didn't just ask they demanded moving on to our next story my child has peanut allergies remove all peanuts from this public park now a few years ago, some friends and I went for a picnic in a public forest preserve on a summer afternoon. The covered pavilion was huge, about 60 meters by 80 meters with dozens of picnic tables and a fire pit. Dozens of different families and groups were there enjoying the day in this public area. It was nice. And then enter Karen, the entitled mum. She planted herself next to our table. All the other tables were full. She showed up with two other Karen haircut friends and their squad of toddlers, apparently for the entitled mum's kid's birthday party. This park has no reserved tables. It was first come, first served. The 
entitled mum was huffing, irritated that she and her precious squad had to sit next to a group of young people. She huffed a bit and gave dirty looks. We ignored her and unpacked our food. All was well until I opened a bag of peanuts. We were watching baseball on a laptop. Gotta have peanuts for baseball. Excuse me, hey, are those peanuts? Yes, I'm trying to be polite. Do you want some? I can share. Here, take some for the kids. The entitled mum starts yelling and slaps the offered bag away. No, get those away from here. Get them out right now. I was totally confused. What? Oh, okay. You don't like peanuts. I got it. I turned away back to my friends, happy to ignore her, but... Hey, didn't you hear me? My child is allergic to peanuts. They could kill her. At this point, my friends were ready to tell her off, but I'm more diplomatic. I'm sorry. I don't know you nor your child. If I did, I would not have offered you peanuts. Now that I know, I will keep my peanuts at our table away from your kid. Okay, enjoy your party. With that polite de-escalation, I returned to my baseball game and everyone had a great day no of course not the entitled mum grabs me by the shoulder listen you are threatening the life of my child you have been told that there is an allergic child in this pavilion the law says you must remove those peanuts from the park now at this point i was in shock a peanut law my friend extricated me from her grasp We can eat whatever we want. It's a public park. If you don't like what we're eating, go sit somewhere else. Yeah, it's as easy as that. We have the allergy, so we have the right of way. Sorry, no, you don't have it. It's your kid that does. That's the law. If you don't take those peanuts out of here, I'm calling the police. At this point, her Karens clucked in support. I told my friends to ignore her. They all started eating my peanuts loudly and defiantly. I was careful to make sure all the shells stayed in our trash bag though. I didn't actually want to hurt the kid, of course. Things quietened down, but 30 minutes later, she did it. A forest preserve policeman, FP, pulled up. EM accosted him. Those people are trying to kill my child. They are throwing peanuts at our kids knowing they are allergic to peanuts. I froze, absolutely terrified. She was a rich middle-aged woman in fancy clothes. We were poor kids in street clothes. I feared the forest preserve policeman would side with her. My friends broke out in angry protest. Luckily, the dozen other families around us were sick of the EM's ranting. Many other people chimed in, calling out the peanut throwing as a lie and confirming that this entitled mum was the instigator. The Forest Preserve policeman scolded EM for the frivolous 911 call. He also confirmed that there is no allergy law. If we kept our peanuts at our table, we were fine. She got off with a warning. EM and her Karens ended their party early, sending us some evil looks on the way out. We enjoyed our peanuts, beer, and baseball the rest of the day. The great thing about this story was OP was very respectful to the kid and their allergy. It's just a shame the entitled mum couldn't have that same respect. And finally, racist entitled mum wants me to give her precious baby my phone because I'm colored and probably stole it. Police get involved and I'm apprehended. Just for background, I'm a half black woman who grew up in a ghetto and worked worked dang hard through high school to earn a scholarship and a full ride through college. I now work a very decent job and make a reasonable amount of money, which I'm not afraid to show off, though I do maintain my ghetto heritage. Naturally, racism is a touchy subject for me. So here I am minding my own business in a local coffee place, answering some emails on my new Samsung Note 10. Day off, so I'm not dressed particularly well. Hoodies, sweatpants, you know the deal. Enter the cast. EM, of course, is an entitled mother, generally snooty looking. Like she was trying really hard to look wealthy, but nothing she had on was actually valuable. Obviously fake jewelry, etc. EK, the entitled kid, maybe 12 or 13. Large, positive he had some kind of autism or Asperger's due to his general mannerisms and, well, screeching. I noticed that this entitled mum and her entitled kid are staring at me. Not a big deal, especially since this is an upper class area and I'm, well, me with my demeanor. Eventually, EM and EK walk over to me and the entitled mum says, You, where did you get that? Um, I bought it. How? How do you think? People like you can't afford phones like that. You must have stolen it. At this point, I'm sort of in shock and speechless. She follows up with, I should report you to the police, but I'm willing to let this go if you hand the phone over to my precious baby son now. And why would I do that? Because you stole it and don't deserve it. You're not getting my phone, lady. At this point, the manager, supervisor, assertive staff member, I'm not sure, but I'm calling him manager from here, walks over after noticing the situation 
and tries to calm everyone down. Mom, I need you to keep it down. This is a coffee shop. This woman called me a lady after stealing my son's phone. Wait, what? I want a full refund, my phone back, and some compensation. Mom, you need to give her the phone back or I'm calling the police. Um, but it's my phone. That's my son's phone, you lady. Mom, that's clearly not your phone. I will call the police if you don't give the phone back. Wow, this is like a 2v1 situation. At this point, the entitled kid is screeching. I can't really make out what he's saying, but he's reaching for my phone. Having dealt with racism, all my life, I began to go off at all three of them, so naturally the police were called. The police immediately apprehended me, and only me, and confiscated my phone. They also took EM, EK, and the manager's statements before taking mine last. All three of them told the cops an exaggerated version of events. At this point, you'd have thought I was some homeless black person who just mugged a 13-year-old, if you believe the story they told. I gave them my statement and told them I would refuse to cooperate any further until they checked security footage. The coffee shop refused to let them check since as far as they were concerned it was clear i was a thief and i've been apprehended so what's the point eventually the security footage was checked after several minutes of convincing and everything became very awkward after that yeah i can imagine the police awkwardly apologized and even went out of their way to say we weren't working on racial stereotypes just responding to the scene that was reported none of the coffee shop staff actually said anything to me once i was apprehended guess i'm not going back there now the the entitled kid never stopped screeching even as I left after being released from police. The entitled mum seemed completely unfazed by the security footage, continuing to claim that I must have stolen it from someone else, because my type can't afford those phones. So that was another day off ruined by entitled parents and racial profiling. I wish I could say I was surprised by the absolute gall of that woman, but to be honest, I've experienced so many of these situations, nothing surprises me anymore. Ugh, well that just makes me feel horrible inside. Like like the racial profiling is one thing, but the fact that neither the coffee shop staff or the entitled mother apologized once they knew they were blatantly wrong is just disgusting. Entitled mum tries taking my iPhone 11. As one very well-known character has said in GTA, ah snap, here we go again. So for some background, I recently got the iPhone 11 Pro as a late birthday slash early Christmas present from my girlfriend. I told her don't get anything that is too expensive, but now she's broke practically. Now onto the story. Yeah, I'm not surprised she's broke. Jesus. It was a normal lovely day where I live. My girlfriend and I decided that we wanted to go to the beach. Since my car was in service, we had to take the train and the walk and vice versa on the way home. To get this clear, my girlfriend and I live quite close to the train station. It was perfectly fine on the way to the beach. Me and my girlfriend had a fantastic time. At least that was until we got back in the train to go home. Insert Karen and her hex porn. When I say this, I really mean it was the full package. The hair, the clothes, everything. This is when I put out my brand new iPhone 11. Now this catches the hex porn's attention and soon enough I feel a tug on my shirt. Can I have your phone? No, sorry, this is my phone. Now I messed myself up by saying this. He obviously went back to Karen and told her that I said that he can't have my phone, but as he left I whispered to my girlfriend, it's a Karen. She quietly giggles and then we mind our own business when all of a sudden I get the classic ahem. And as I said, ah snap, here we go again. Did you say that my angel can't have your phone? Yeah. What's wrong with that? He needs that phone. Now guys, this kid is about five to seven years old. If he needs it so much, then why don't you buy him a brand new iPhone 11 Pro? At that point, Karen pretty much went like, screw my kid, I need that phone. She proceeded to ask me how much I want for it. Look, it's not for sale. My girlfriend gave me this by spending all of her money just for me instead of for herself. She then turns to my girlfriend, obviously completely ignoring the fact I just said she spent all her money. And then she says, Missy, if you can buy one you can and will buy another one for me what the f excuse me but if you didn't hear my boyfriend i have no money bull poop she then proceeded to grab my girlfriend and rip her purse from her hand after that i lost it yelling at her to stay away from me and my girlfriend or i will call the cops she said no i will be calling the cops because you assaulted me she then proceeds to call the police afterwards at the next stop the train was pulled to a halt the train didn't even leave until the issue was solved her story was the normal karen story of him and his girlfriend assaulted her in the scared traumatized voice the officer then asked for my side and i explained everything he then asked to see the footage and let the train go because of 
people needing to be somewhere. When the officer says this, Karen goes as pale as a ghost, literally. He checks the camera footage and says that the Karen is arrested for assault and harassment or something like that. Karen, if you are somehow reading this, get owned, you mother effing lady. Ah, Karens, they never learn. Now, just quickly in between stories, if you haven't already subscribed, I ask you to subscribe. We are so close now to 200,000 subscribers, and that's a massive milestone for the channel. So if you're feeling kind and want to help me out on getting to 200k, hit the subscribe button now. Moving on to our second story. Actual Karen upset I dyed my hair. When I was about 15, I attended a very religious Baptist school. It was crazy. On to the story. So at 15, I really wanted to dye my hair. My mother always had, and I was excited about trying something other than the dishwater brown I had. I begged and begged, and my mum finally said okay as long as it was semi-permanent. I desperately wanted red, so off the Walmart we went. We found a foam mousse that said it lasted two weeks. Box says auburn. Sweet, a natural colour. Handbook says no dyeing your hair are natural colours, cause god, I assume that means the school handbook. So we dye my hair, and when it comes out, this is red. Like fire hydrant, little mermaid, cherry popsicle red. But it looks great, lit as anything. I'm thrilled. But I'm nervous, and I asked my mum if she thinks it'll be okay, or if I'll get into trouble. Now she works as a teaching assistant at the school, and so she says she doesn't think it'll be a problem, and we head to school the next day. Also on this day, we're doing a volunteer day to stack wood for an old man. Welcome to New England. I get to school and once inside the hat comes off. It's a very small school. The entire high school is about 30 people and five teachers. Loads of compliments. Teachers too. All is well. But not for one entitled kid. She's got a face like a shrunken sphincter and she's been glaring at me all morning. Wow, what an image. I hate this goody two shoes lady anyway, so I ignore her. Well, EK's mum is the receptionist for the school and she doesn't like me either. At about at 11 a.m. I get hauled out of class and into the principal's office. I'm already very humiliated and not sure what's going on, so I get there to the entitled mum and principal glaring at me. EM claims I was bragging to everyone that I didn't have to follow the rules and she knows that because EK, her daughter, told her. And that I thought I wouldn't get in trouble because my mum worked at the school. My mum is a second grade teacher assistant. I'm in high school. Also, I haven't said anything to anyone. I've never ever been in trouble. Straight A student. Teacher's love me i'm a huge goddamn nerd but the principal decides that karen which is her actual name is definitely telling the truth they say that i don't reflect godly values with my sinner's hair and i'm not allowed to go help stack an old man's firewood because i don't respect christ with my sinner hair i leave the office sobbing and my old teacher catches me and asks what the heck is going on i sob slash explain and then head to the empty room i'm meant to sit in alone the whole afternoon while all my friends go off together to volunteer on the way i pass Past the entitled kid and the entitled mum talking and EK smirks at me. But my old teacher has other plans. Legit, she is the best woman ever. Now she goes to find my mum knowing this whole thing is BS. My mum loses her god dang mind and the room I'm in is next door to the principal's office. It shares a wall. I can hear her yelling. She goes up one side and down the other saying she doesn't know what EM's problem is but if they had half a brain they'd know Karen likes to stir stuff up. And I'm legit a 15 year old who has zero history of causing trouble. Five minutes later, principal and the fuming Karen are in my classroom slash prison to say that while they don't think my hair is Christ-like and I will need to wear a hat the whole time I stack wood, I can go to the volunteer day. F you Karen and your sphincter goblin. Also, I was the best firewood stacker they had. Well dang, I didn't think people would judge others based on their hair color, but I guess I'm wrong. Moving on to our final story. Religious nutjob EPs don't approve of me dating their son. I was attending an anime convention around two years ago, and it was the first time I'd gathered the courage to cosplay. Doki Doki, or Doki Doki Literature Club, had been out for maybe a month or two and was super popular. So me and my friends decided to go as the main girls, with me, of course, dressing up as Monica. Or probably Monica, actually, that makes more sense. The whole thing was amazing. Conventions themselves are always fun, but when you're cos playing it's a whole new thing during this time it wasn't uncommon to have people come up and give all four of us compliments or ask to take pictures with us it's also important to note that for whatever reason there's protesters at these conventions they're your usual overbearing religious nutjob fun police types but i have no idea what they're actually protesting for anyways one day we're walking around when this guy who looks to be about our age comes up to me and my friends when we were going out for food and he has this conversation with us about our costumes getting into the 
game, giving us compliments, etc. He then asked to take some pictures with us, asking for some specific photos. One is where we're all trying to pull at him, and then he wants to take one-on-one -on -one photo with each of us with me looking in the background looking angry or spooky. It makes sense if you've seen or played the game. The final picture is of me holding onto his arm with a big smile while he looks terrified. After the photo, we're exchanging Instagram info, and I casually ask if he's there with anyone. And he got super uncomfortable and said that he was there with his family. As the day goes on, we're messaging each other over Instagram and things have started to get pretty flirty. Eventually, he asked me out to dinner at a restaurant near the hotel we're staying at. The date itself was pretty good. He was funny, we watched a lot of the same shows and could banter back and forth on differences in opinion. A few weeks go by and we're dating at this point. We're over at his place and things are getting pretty hot and heavy on the sofa. Luckily, nothing too raunchy was going on because his parents walk in with groceries out of nowhere apparently he hadn't told them about me because they were all like oh who are you although they didn't seem too upset on what they'd walked in on i'm beyond mortified but the parents sit down across from us after putting the groceries down and start asking questions what's my name how do we meet etc the both of them seem very excited to meet me at first i introduce myself and tell the story of how we met and pull up our photo together with me in costume and show it to them they get this grim look on their their faces like they just found out I killed someone and give their son this death glare. At this point, they're asking me to leave and I'm asking if I did something wrong and apologizing if I did. It's just we want someone modest for our son and we don't see you two being a good match. Wait, what? You don't exactly line up with our beliefs is all. Please leave. We need to talk with our son. But I don't understand. You need me to spell it out? He doesn't need some atheist loser in his life. Mom, don't raise your voice to your mother. Walk your little friend out of here and say goodbye. They argue for another minute or two before my boyfriend walks me out. He gives me a kiss and tells me he's sorry and he'll call me later. When he finally calls back, he explains how his parents helped organize those protests at conventions and how they had some weird views like that. He said that he fought with them for over an hour about how he was done with their bull after they demanded he never speak to me again. He ended up moving in with me about a month after that. It was kind of soon, but he didn't really have anywhere to go since his parents had given him an ultimatum him and apparently his entire family is like that on the bright side we are still together so at least the story has a bit of a happy ending well all i can say is sorry this happened to you but fair play to your boyfriend for sticking up for you against his parents let my nine-year-old use your fifteen thousand dollar lawnmower so a little backstory my father and i run a landscaping company with commercial grade lawnmowers that cost somewhere around 12 to 15k and we mow a fairly large church in a sort of sleazy area of the city which is also a Catholic school during the day. The kids that are in this school are some of the most misbehaving and out of control kids in all our commercial and residential properties. While mowing the church on a Friday, which is the day we are scheduled to mow on, I was mowing the backyard while my dad was trimming the front. All of a sudden, I turn around the building again and suddenly there are around 30 kids ranging from first to eighth grade running around outside while I'm mowing. The bagger is off on this lawn, which means if I hit a rock with the blades running, a small little rock becomes a projectile and can seriously hurt one of those kids obviously annoyed i hop off the mower turning the blades off first and went to go talk to the principal who we've spoken to about the issue many times and she is the parent to one of the kids the situation happened as followed excuse me mom can you please keep the kids inside while we are here mowing why do you lawn guys complain about everything we are just asking you to please keep the kids inside so they don't get hurt on accident then just don't mow while we're outside we've been mowing this lawn for a year and and this is the day we're assigned to mow by the pastor. I don't care. He's not here, so I'm in charge. All of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see a kid no older than nine years old climbing onto my tractor. I then sprint towards the kid. Excuse me, can you please get off my tractor? No, I want to play on the big machine. Please get off the tractor. That doesn't belong to you and it's dangerous for a kid. Then I heard, do not talk to my baby like that. Turns out the kid was none other than the principal's son. Please have your son get off my tractor it isn't but the principal cuts me off don't tell me how to raise my child at this point i'm getting red in the face to the point of steam coming out of my ears while trying to keep my composure this is a fourteen thousand dollar machine and a nine-year-old shouldn't even be allowed near it i said pulling out the key so the kid couldn't try to do anything mom he turned off the big machine give me that key now and why would i give you the key because I said so. 
you're a kid and I'm an adult, so listen to your elders now. Mind that I'm 21 years old. Mom, I'm going to ask one more time for you to remove your son from my tractor. Give me that key now. At this point, my dad comes over wondering why I haven't finished and brought the mower over to him to switch off yet. Mind that my dad is not as polite as I am and when it comes to money and his expensive equipment, he does not F around. I explain the situation and what happens next is priceless. Who the F do you think you are? The principal is taken aback. That tractor is worth $15,000 and you think it's okay to let a kid play on it? At this point, the kid was so scared of my dad's yelling that he ran into the crowd of kids that had gathered around. Get those kids inside until we're done so that no one gets hurt. What transpires next doesn't really matter, but it ended with two teachers calming the situation and the kids going inside. The next week, we go back to Mo again, and the pastor came and talked to us, apologizing profusely. The way the whole situation went down was probably not the best language to use in front of young kids, and my dad apologized for that. But all of us agreed that those kids had probably heard worse at home. The principal, on the other hand, was put on leave because of the situation. Well, dang, that probably sounds like a good decision. Let my kid ride your mower. Yeah, sure lady. Are you going to help me clean up when he falls off and the blades turn him into hash afterwards? I, uh, yeah, didn't think so. Moving on to our second story, my entitled mother freaks when my spouse leaves me and I can no longer pay her bills. For as long as I can remember, my mother, the entitled mum, has worked several jobs to pay her bills. As an adult, I got married and our combined income was pretty good, so we decided we would help take some financial stress off her. So we started paying her phone bill and her utilities and bringing bags of groceries by once a week or so then one day her car died and we decided to surprise her with a new one we picked out a new smaller silver toyota mid-range not all the bells and whistles but still a nice car when we gave it to her she seemed very appreciative and happy we told her we'd pay the monthly payments the registration and insurance but the rest was up to her she still worked full time but i had no idea where her money went the plan was for her to take all those bills on again one day but we just never set a time for it to happen. Fast forward two years later and out of the blue, my wife cheated and took off, leaving me with a ton of debt, a house I couldn't afford on my own and a broken heart. I called my mom and sobbed over the phone to her about how terrible I felt. She was sympathetic until I told her I wouldn't be able to pay her bills anymore. In fact, she became totally silent. Are you there? Did you just say I have to start paying my bills again? Like my car payment and insurance? Yes, I can't afford it anymore with just my salary. Plus, I'm going to lose my house. But I can't afford to start paying these bills. Mum, I had no idea this was going to happen. I literally have no control over this. I didn't even want this car. I hate silver. You got me silver knowing how much I prefer white vehicles. And now you're telling me I have no choice but to pay for an ugly silver car I didn't want? Plus all the other things like insurance. You are the one who gave me those bills. Why should I pay them? Oh my god, really? She got a free car and is now complaining. Oh my goodness. I I'm speechless at her response and then she shrieks. How could you do this to me? It's one sentence from her I'll never forget or forgive her for. My sadness turned to anger in a split second. How could I do this to you? My wife left me. I'm alone and feel like trash. I'm gonna lose my house and my credit is gonna be screwed. I barely make enough of my own bills and you're going on about you? I've been paying your bills for over five years. Did you never once think that one day they'd be your bills again? Did you ever plan to pay things yourself again? or were you just assuming I keep paying everything until you die? You are the trashiest mother on the planet. I'm here heartbroken, lost, and depressed, and the only thing you can think about is yourself. I hung up on her and cried even more. Maybe 15 minutes later, my phone rings and it's my sister. Figuring she'd just gotten off the phone with our mother, I answer. Okay, you talk to mum. What do you want? She's very upset. So, what about me? Is it that nobody cares what I'm going through right now? My life is in shambles and I'm devastated. Well, you can't really blame mum. You bought her that car. She didn't ask for it. And she does only own white cars. She didn't have a car at all. If I hadn't gotten her that one, she'd have had to get a new one anyway. She's been driving it for over two years. Besides, she said at some point she'd be taking those bills back on. When was that going to happen? You may just have to work something out with her. Just pay a little to help her get back on her feet. You can't just totally stop helping her. Uh, yes, I can. I ran the numbers. I literally do not have a penny to give her anymore and you know what even if i did i wouldn't 
I've been doing this for her for years and the way she acted today She doesn't deserve it if she needs money from here on out. It's on you This is the one time I need my family for support and clearly i'm not going to get it She tried to defend the way my mother reacted, but I just hung up on her too I put my phone on silent and sat with my dogs in the dark thinking about how I had nobody to lean on Since my mother and sister were such entitled selfish human beings after that first call My mother did not reach out to me again to see how I was doing I learned the hard way who my real friends and family were during that time and spoiler alert It wasn't my mother Holy cow, F them OP, you need to start living your life and just forget they even exist. And OP has actually added an edit. This was years ago. I fixed my credit, paid the debts, got remarried and kicked my mother to the curb. Best decision ever. Well, that is fantastic news. I'm glad you're back on your feet. And for our final story, EM tries to take food from our meal. Backstory. This happened literally yesterday. I have anxiety from being in public areas for long times and interaction is a nightmare for me. So, my family and I went out for a meal as we do every week. Pretty normal for us. We arrived at the restaurant and after waiting at the waiting stand, the waitress shows us to our table and she hands us the menus. Around five minutes later, she comes back and we order our drinks. Around about then, a lady and her two children, a boy and a girl, arrive at the restaurant and don't even wait to be seated. They simply walk in and find a table. The waitress at the time notices what happens, so finishes up with us and goes to talk to them and asks if they would like to order drinks. The lady ordering had a very loud voice and everyone in the restaurant could hear everything she was saying. Her kids seemed pretty shy and so just sat playing on their tablets. She finishes ordering and the waitress goes to get her drinks. The entitled mum receives the drinks and the waitress asks if she'd like to order food but she says they're only there for drinks so she pays at that point it seemed like the waitress at the time had finished her shift so she went home the new waitress begins working and by then our food was about to arrive the waitress walks out and walks up to us about to hand us the plates of food but then the entitled mum gets involved Excuse me, that's our food? But my mum says, no, it isn't. We ordered it. Yes, it is our food. The waitress chimes in. No, mum, this is their food. They ordered it. It is for table number 12. You are table number 10. I don't care. Either give me the food or I'm going to your manager. By this point, the whole restaurant was staring in disbelief. Mom, I own this restaurant. Please stop pestering the customers or I'm going to ask you to leave. The EM goes into full rage mode, screaming at the waitress. All right, mom, I'm afraid you're going to have to leave the restaurant or we will have to call the police. But we haven't finished our drinks. Tough luck. You should treat people better next time. That's it. I'm leaving. Thank you, mom. Have a good night. She left and the waitress gave us the meal for free because of the inconvenience. We actually saw her screaming at someone else after we left the restaurant too. Dude, what was going through her mind as that happened? Oh, I didn't order any food, but this food that I didn't order is now mine. Like, what the heck? I don't believe that thinking is this entitled mother's strong skill. Entitled kid wants my car. Newborn and I can just take the bus in the middle of a Canadian winter. This happened many years ago, but I still get a chuckle out of the ridiculousness of it whenever I recall the ghoul of it on cold days like today. To set the scene and give you a cast rundown, it's a bitterly cold Canadian winter and I, uniquely titled as me for this story, have myself a wee bundle of squishy new joy, a baby, with many an appointment to get to in said cold and a husband who also must get to work daily. On this particular day in history, I get a phone call from my several years younger but still in his 20s brother, entitled Kid, which isn't particularly unusual because he's made it a habit to call me and complain about any and everything in his spoiled rotten life. He is the precious golden child of my poor excuse for parents, EP or EM and ED respectively. All of them had long since driven me to move six comfortable hours away from their poop show, but they love to rope me into their dumpster fire because family. Today is no different. You see, my brother, the entitled kid, has a horrific track record with cars. I was given my old but reliable little car as a graduation gift after my distant uncle's passing some years before. It was fully paid off but never maintained and nobody in the family wanted it because it was well old she was one heck of a reliable vehicle though and i loved her to death It was also my only vehicle and an absolute necessity in my life. My entitled brother, on the other hand, was such a princess that nothing less than something paid for with someone else's money would do. They were offered a brand new car from my wealthy grandparents well before grad, but offered to buy a beta with potential and use the rest of the thousands of dollars they had saved on modifying it. My entitled brother totaled it almost immediately. They bagged it until it collapsed, dropped my entitled parents' money on fixing it, never got it running again, and were gifted a second vehicle just months later from wealthy grandparents once again. 
Lately, my entitled brother has been calling me to complain about the second car. He was furious that our grandparents wouldn't buy him a brand new one, disgusted that it was a car and not a big tricked out pickup truck, and absolutely appalled by our grandparents and entitled parents' greed. I'd heard it up one side and down the other since his first car. The poor thing, living with entitled parents without paying for so much as his own gas or cell phone bill, let alone rent, food, or bills. The indignity of this sweet, innocent boy having to drive a used car that he still didn't have to pay for because he couldn't hold a job for longer than a few months and blew all his money on booze, teenage girls and modifications for the car he hated so much just to make it tolerable. I normally just laughed and told him he had the wrong audience because I've been forced to pay for everything from necessities to scraps since I was 14 and was treated like trash by the same people spoiling him rotten. He didn't care though, he was the victim. I had it easy because I had a trashy rented apartment, a husband with a minimum wage job and a baby. So easy in fact that when he called me on this particular day, he had a solution to his problems. It isn't fair that uncle died and you got his car. What? I'd rather him be here than have his car, but nobody wanted it and I needed it for university, so that's just the way it went. You weren't even close to driving when I got it. Plus, grandparents have bought you two cars since then. Mine's at least 10 years older than both of those. Yeah. Yeah, but EP should have known that I'd need it more when I was done with school. They should have saved it for me and made you buy your own. What? That's ridiculous. But it doesn't matter. You have a new car now. No, I don't. Then he proceeded to explain how our entitled parents' inability to maintain his second car somehow led to it breaking some crucial parts. And it was beyond salvageable. My parents had already dropped thousands on repairing this car in the few months my entitled brother had been driving it. But he still wouldn't stop sporting and bagging the heck out of it though so it followed suit with its predecessor and faced a woefully early demise i tried being the responsible older sibling and telling my entitled brother that he needs to take better care of his stuff but i would have had better luck convincing a raccoon to join the church of staying the f out of trash cans it was as usual everybody's fault but ek that this misfortune has befallen him it just isn't fair i should have your car i disagree but we can't turn back time i guess but you don't need it like i do you live in the big city I live in a small rural town, so I need to do a lot of driving to get to work. I can't find a new job if I can't even get there. Why don't you carpool with our parents? They always offer to take you to your jobs when they work. But how am I supposed to see my friends or buy anything? EP won't drive me anywhere other than work. That's not fair. I really just need your car. It's basically mine anyway, since I should have gotten it. Oh, snap. You're serious? I have a kid. My husband uses my car to get to work and back. How am I supposed to get baby? to their appointments and how are you gonna pay for the car insurance with no job your big city has a bus system you guys can bus everywhere there's no bus here i need your car i'm absolutely stunned at this point dude you're not getting my car the bus is expensive plus it's freezing here and i don't live at a stop so i'm not waiting outside to take baby on the bus also my husband's work schedule doesn't work with a bus schedule and even if i did decide to let you have it how would you get it or pay for it the place needs to be renewed every month it's almost 80 dollars where are you getting that money my entitled brother is smug because he's clearly thought out this genius plan already and i'm surely going to have to go along with it now well our parents were thinking of driving up there next week for a visit i'll go with them and grab the car then or you and baby could drive here for a visit then our parents can drive you guys back i'd rather you do that because i don't really want to drive all the way there and back i don't need to pay for the insurance either why would i need to do that it's still your car in your name you wouldn't stop paying for it just because i'm the one driving it you're the one who's helping me i could text you my email later and you could transfer me money for gas like once a week to make sure it's running and all that but that won't go to insurance i'll just make sure the car's running i honestly didn't think that i could be any more shocked than when they demanded my car to begin with but to insist that i not only give up my only means of transportation in favor of paying for the bus for my husband and i but also pay for them to drive my car for god knows how long i was honestly too blown away to even be angry i couldn't even laugh at the insanity of it all i could do was give him a 
hard no, tell him again why that wasn't fair or reasonable, and listen to him rant furiously about how unfair I was being until he called me a greedy effing lady and hung up on me. Now, this wouldn't be an entitled parent story without an entitled parent making a good showing. And our entitled mum hates to miss out on the spotlight. While our dad was busy dumping time and money into fixing my brother's car after our call, my entitled mum called me a short while later just to talk and check on baby. You'll never believe what my brother asked me for when he called earlier. He already told me that you wouldn't give him your car next week? Of course not. What are we supposed to do here? Bus? It's freezing and expensive. I know, I know. It's just, well, he planned it out and he was so sure you'd say yes. He put so much effort into figuring it all out and he was so hopeful. Now he's being so mean to all of us because you won't let him. Mum, that's insane. His plan was to take a car from a new mum and her newborn, have the new mum pay for everything and probably trash the car in the process. Would that make sense to you if it was anybody but me being asked to do this? Well, no, but you aren't really a new mother. You had a baby, yeah, but you've got a husband and a home and you live in a big city. It's a lot harder for the other new mums I've known and your brother has such bad luck with cars and jobs lately that mum I have a tiny apartment and I'm just saying that you could have helped you had the option to help your brother and you chose not to he needs a car you've made things so much harder on all of us because you won't help your family what about you then why can't he drive your car your dad and I need it for work we can't spare it and with how hard your brother is on cars we don't trust him with ours my husband needs mine for his job and I need it for baby plus I don't want my brother to wreck my car either. But that's different. Your dad and I need to support EK ourselves. You're just playing house, but we have an actual family to support. This is insane. If you won't help them, fine. But you remember this the next time you need anything. And I was hung up on again. I wish I could tell you that this ends with some justice or something. Like I said, it's been years since then. Plenty of time for karma to come rolling on through and give my entitled brother a reality check. Unfortunately, it never worked like that. I received weeks of flack for my refusal to hand my car over. My entitled parents, entitled kid brother, and grandparents all took turns sending me passive-aggressive texts, lecturing me, ignoring me, guilting me, and whatever else they could think of to remind me of how horrible I was for not giving EK my car. Eventually, my entitled brother was gifted yet another new vehicle, this time one that was more to his liking that he totaled in a few months. In the five-ish years since this story, he has written off at least six or seven other vehicles. How does he still have a license? One belonged to our parents, which ended up being picked off the highway in pieces. The other was grandparents. The rest all gifted to him, and not a single one of those write-offs were his fault. He still lives with our entitled parents, and while I haven't spoken to any of them in a couple of years now, I hear he's on another brand new car paid for by someone else's dime that's needed to be repaired a few times already. It's none of my concern now. Still, I can't help but laugh at the absurdity of it and wonder how in the heck he thought any of that was going to work in his favor. I'm not gonna lie to you, the one thing that I think of when I read this story is what the heck is wrong with your family? Like, your brother is bad enough, totaling six or seven cars. I seriously don't know how he still has a license. But your entitled parents sound just as bad, if not even worse. When your mum said your family doesn't count because you already have a house and live in the city, like, how does that make any sense? You have a baby. What was the actual quote? You're just playing house, but we have an actual family to support. I mean, come on, what does that actually mean? I don't know, I think it's a very good idea that you've cut ties with them to be honest people like that aren't really good for anything apart from taking stuff from you karen demolishes my new ipad pro hi there so i've been reading a lot of entitled parent stories lately and i've really laughed at it but it's not funny to go through it yourself so my birthday was the day when i'm writing this and my boyfriend friend one and friend two came over to my house to celebrate i'm very introverted nervous and shy because of my social anxiety but my mum, for some reason invited my aunt who didn't agree with my transsexuality she always said he and boy to me which really hurt me but she didn't care she is a karen it's so good i have such loving and supporting people around me so that entitled mum came of course but her nice kid is really nice and is not entitled Thank God. Oh, look how big he's become. She's rubbing my hair. My mum says, oh, you just can't get it right. Not this again. If you're born a boy, you're a boy forever. I've never been a boy. You're going to heck.
Just shut up, EM. If my angel pretended to be the other gender for attention, I would disown him, she said, now annoyed. I ran up to my room and cried. When I was done, I came downstairs and tried to ignore the entitled mum. But while I was talking to my boyfriend, I saw the entitled mum try to sneak upstairs. I became worried that she would steal from me again. One time, she managed to steal my bird. How? I don't know. So I don't trust her very much. I saw that she tried to unplug my new iPad Pro that I got today. So I confronted her What are you doing? You don't deserve nice stuff God doesn't like people like you I was very hurt Since I'm religious But I believe that God made us how he wanted us to be Aunt, put it down now No, my son deserves it more than you Her nice kid comes upstairs to see what's going on Come here, baby. You want this, right? She's pointing at my tablet. Mum, I'm 13. I'm not a baby. No, I don't really like drawing. COP, my baby wants it. Now give it to him. Mum, stop it. Then Karen proceeds to throw my already unplugged iPad Pro to the floor and then she starts stamping on it with her high heels. It was completely wrecked. I started crying hysterically. The nice kid was so done with his entitled mum's BS and actually hit her. My boyfriend, two friends, mum and dad heard me crying and ran up to see what was going on and they see the entitled mum literally feeding her nice kids punches me crying and my ipad in five million parts my mum and dad tried to get the entitled mum far away from her nice kid who got a broken arm a broken nose and a purple and swollen eye and a lot of bruises just from his entitled mum's punches my boyfriend and two friends came and comforted me i was having a panic attack because i just witnessed a mum abusing her son and demolishing my new tablet. The entitled mum was locked in the bathroom while my boyfriend called the police. The police took 15 minutes to arrive and later tased her. She had to pay for my tablet and got arrested for child abuse. And I know that she's going to jail because where I live, it's super illegal to just slap a child. Well, dang, thank you, Multiland, for posting this story. She definitely deserves to go to jail. In the comments, OP actually said that they're still freaked out, but she is going to spend the night at the police station, thankfully. Well, I think she should get more time than that. Now, Mortaland has actually posted an update to this story. Update. Karen demolishes my new iPad Pro. So, a few days ago, I posted a story when my evil aunt punched the living light out of her son and demolished my new $2,000 iPad Pro, all just on my birthday. So, she spent a few nights at the police station and I went to court yesterday, but I couldn't post a story because the entitled mum has done much more than what happened on my birthday. It was mentally and physically straining. So, I went to court because I was a witness of child abuse and a victim. When we came, the entitled mum was already there. We sat down and began. The judge started. So, EM, you have abused a child and destroyed an iPad Pro, right? No, OP hit my baby over and over and smashed his own drawing thing because, because... You cannot accuse someone for no reason. Because he's possessed by a gay demon. The entitled mum screamed with confidence in her voice. I could almost not hold back my laughter at that point. What? He said with a blank stare. Don't laugh. Off, he needs an exorcist now everyone was so confused we're not getting anywhere the judge said all so confused and somehow the entitled mom managed to get free from her handcuffs and ran towards me grabbed her handcuffs and started hitting my arm with the handcuffs and yes i indeed broke my arm <laughs> Uh, um, okay, uh, r slash that happened? Please tell me how to put in pictures in the text so that you can see my cast. But the court was cancelled and we're going back tomorrow. I've just come home from the hospital. I'm sending more updates and hopefully pictures. By the way, if anyone is wondering what happened to the nice kid, he's still in the hospital. Okay, I'm not completely sure about this story, if it's completely true or not. Um, OP is actually- Oh my goodness me. Okay, I'm gonna put the picture up on screen now. OP has actually posted a picture of the cast. Oh my god. Alright, not gonna lie, I didn't believe the end of this story, but holy cow, I hope you're okay. I guess that just proves that some stories that seem fake are actually sometimes real. Holy heck. Moving on to our second story. Entitled mother tries to throw me out of Burger King because I will not give her my seat. A bit of backstory here. I am 14. This incident took place in April April 2019, near the time Avengers Endgame
game was released. I'd gone to watch it with my friends. This is my first entitled parent story. After the movie ended, we went to get some food at Burger King since there was no McDonald's around. I sat on a seat to keep the table reserved. When my friends reached the line for ordering, just then the entitled mum and her entitled kid came to my table. I was sitting on a group table which had sofa backrests. We were six friends there. The conversation went as follows. Excuse me, can you please vacate the seat? But why? Because my angel wants to sit here? She was there with her son. He looked like he was eight to nine years old. But mom, there are many vacant seats for two and four people. My angel wants to sit here. He deserves to sit here. Why? Because he is so intelligent that he can use a computer on his own and change my profile picture on Facebook and Instagram. Mom, I knew how to change my profile picture on Facebook when I was six or seven. Instagram didn't exist then. Oh, really? You are nowhere near him in being deserving enough of a seat. Mom, this is a group table meant for at least six people. I cannot let you two take it. I'm here with a group of six. Please go and occupy a seat for two. The entitled mom was then really angry at me. You need to get up immediately. My son wants to sit here and you will go away now. No, it's you who will go away. And why do you even want this seat? It has sofa seating. The entitled kid then saw the manager come in the store and called him. He must have been a regular at the store. What happened? Sir, I am here with my friends. I have occupied the seat for my friends while they're ordering. No, he's lying. My son was sitting here when he pushed him and sat himself. Just then, another employee came over to speak to the manager about the nuisance by this lady that was caught on camera. She was asked to leave and gave an angry look while shouting at the manager. This is the truth. I cannot believe how this lady thought she would get away with lying in a Burger King. I am a national level into school tech quizzer, so I wish she would start a tech-related argument because she thinks that changing profile pictures is a work of high intelligence, only to be performed by the top minds, but it did not happen. Ah, well, that is a shame. Way to flex on us by saying you're a national level into school tech quizzer, by the way. Moving on to our penultimate story. Entitled dad tries to kill my dog. Yep, you read that right. That's the reason why I haven't been uploading anything here recently I was taking care of my dog and had to go to court multiple times I uploaded a picture of my dog a while ago. She's a yellow lab pit bull bulldog mix But she is one of the nicest friendliest dogs ever the one day I was walking her Her name is chloe and I took her to the park so she can run around and we can play fetch with a tennis ball She also likes to jump on me every time she runs back with the ball Which is kind of funny because she always knocks me down So after like 20 minutes of playing fetch an entitled dad and entitled kid come up to me and at first the entitled kid asked some normal questions like what kind of dog is she i told him she's a yellow lab i never tell anyone but my friends and family she's part pit and bulldog because people then always call animal control and says that she's trying to bite them the entitled kid asked if he could throw the ball a few times i said sure because chloe loves to play then the entitled dad asked how much for your dog i was shocked that he asked that question I told him that she's not for sale because I trained her, raised her, and even though she's not legally a support dog, I consider her one because she knows when I'm sad or something and cheers me up all the time. He then said, $100? No, $200? No, $500? I told him no and please leave me and my dog alone. I was holding Chloe's leash in my hand. She could tell something was wrong and was in that attack slash scared stance, so I started walking away. That's when the entitled dad grabbed the leash out of my hands and started kicking and hitting her. I pulled my knife out after I couldn't pull the entitled dad away from Chloe and I stabbed him. What? Chloe was extremely hurt. I called the cops and told them everything. What, you stabbed a person? The police arrived quickly. I told them everything. They then took Chloe to the vet and I rode with her. I had to go to court about five times. I was not charged with anything. What, really? But the entitled dad was and I don't know what for. Chloe is now completely fine. She has no scars or deformities at all and is acting perfectly fine. Oh my goodness me. Uh, alright, let me know in the comments. Would you have stabbed someone because they were threatening your dog? That's a little bit extreme for me, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Moving on to our final story. How my crazy aunt got my family to hate her. So every other year, I celebrate Christmas with my dad's side of the family. Odd years, mother's side, even years, dad's side. At the time, I was about 9 or 10 and I still remember this event vividly. So a few days before our Christmas fireworks party and my mum sends an email to the people who are coming to the party. 
She says that my crazy aunt was to bring appetizers. Now, this will be important for later. My step aunt was to bring an entree and we would provide the rest like drinks and desserts. The day of the party came along and my step cousins came first. And my sisters, step cousins and I went to play in the front yard. Half an hour after the party started, my crazy aunt came and had a bag of food in her hands. She unloads the bag and inside of it was desserts and soda and there were no appetizers in sight. My mum then said, I said to bring appetizers is not sweet don't tell me what to do now go get me some wine my mother was annoyed but got some wine for her after this there was not any arguing until she got fed up with all of us kids playing outside she marched out and yelled and i mean loudly excuse me i don't think that you're supposed to be playing outside actually we can't don't you talk back to me sorry that's what i thought but my dad interrupts her aunt that's enough let them be Fine. After this tantrum, nothing happens until after dinner. My mum and my crazy aunt both pulled out the sweets and this ensues. Put that back. She was annoyed. No, I brought the food and I get to use it. I told you clearly that you were supposed to bring an appetizer, not sweets. Yeah, that's true. Just not now, OP. While my mum was talking to me as to why I should just stay out of it, the crazy aunt was unloading her entire bag of diabetes, sorry if that's offensive, onto the table. My mum looked over in disgust as she saw cookies, candy, brownies, donuts, cake, and two liters of soda. Put that away! No! They're fighting for five minutes until me and my dad break them up. My crazy aunt then has the audacity to punch my dad in the face and say, Get out of my way! I can't believe that you would do such a thing and then turn against your sister! You stay away from my wife and kids, you maniac! My crazy aunt then runs into the living room and notices my dad's phone, an iPhone 6, and she grabs it and runs out the door. My dad calls the police on my mother's phone and she comes back with the iPhone, saying to the cops that it was compensation for all the trauma that occurred here. She was charged with theft, assault, and child endangerment because she left her son at my house. Too long didn't read, my aunt is a psycho. Well, yeah, I think that sums up this story pretty well. Entitled mum tries to ruin my sister's Chuck E. Cheese birthday party. This event took place a few years ago when my little sister was turning five She wanted to have a party at the local Chuck E. Cheese with our small cousins and a few friends Unbeknownst to us, Chuck E. Cheese is the stomping ground of countless entitled parents and their hex spawns The scene opens on a typical Chuck E. Cheese It was a Saturday, late morning, not too busy yet This particular Chuck E. Cheese has two small party rooms and our party was in one of those rooms The other party room was empty We were the only birthday party happening at that particular time. We arrived with my sister about 30 minutes early to set up and make sure we were there before guests arrived. My mum had purchased the best birthday party package they had. Lots of choices of food, a huge bucket of tokens and a large cake. The room looked great with decorations and balloons. The large token bucket was sitting in the middle of the table near the cake. My sister was so excited for her party. She took a few tokens and went with my mum to play a few games before her friends and our cousins arrived. She was approached by an entire kid who was around 10 years old almost immediately and he asked her and my mum if he could have a few tokens my sister was learning to share in preschool so she immediately handed him a token with a huge smile at the same time that my mum was opening her mouth to tell the kid no we had a lot of guests coming and she wanted to save the tokens for them the entitled kid took the token with a frown and said that's it what the freaking token my sister looked confused thought she had done something wrong and went to hand him the rest of the tokens in her hand about 10 altogether. My mum stopped her and told the entitled kid to be happy with what he was given. The kid flipped her off, kids these days, and took off to play a game while my mum just shook her head in annoyance. She's been to Chuck E. Cheese before with my sister and she knows kids can be little buttheads when it comes to tokens. She told my sister not to give him any more tokens and they played some games. End of story, right? Wrong. The party guests had started to arrive, so they headed back to the party room to greet everyone. In total, we had five of our little cousins and five kids from preschool, a total of 10 guests. I knew all of the kids at the party pretty well, so I was surprised when a kid I didn't know, the entitled kid, walked into the party room and took a seat at the end of the table. My mum immediately looked annoyed and walked over to confront the kid. This is a private birthday party, you cannot be in here. My mum said I could come and join the party, so that's what I'm doing. Can I have some tokens? 
Ah, uh, your mum is not in charge of this party and we didn't invite you. You cannot have any tokens. Please go back to your mum. She left. She said I should join the party and she will come back for me later. My mum has this little vein on the side of her forehead that pops out when she's getting really angry. That bad boy was popping hard when the entitled kid said that. She left? Ugh, oh, listen, this party is private. You were not invited. Leave this room now or I will go and have a talk with your mum. That's gonna be kind of hard with her not being here. He smirked when he said this and I was starting to get angry at the way he was talking to my mum. I walked over to him and leaned down near his ear so that only he could hear me. Listen, kid, this is my sister's party and we do not want you here. Get the heck out. You are all racist. You don't want the black at your party. Yeah, he was black and we are white. But I point at another guest who is black and my sister's friend. Yeah, dude, we're racist. She's an Uncle Tom. Just give me some freaking tokens so I can go play games. He reached reaches for the bucket, grabs a few quickly and takes off. My mum starts to go after him, but then shakes her head and changes her mind. He only got a few tokens and he's gone, so she tries to calm down and move on. You can feel some tension in the room as everyone watches the kid leave, but luckily my sister is having too much fun greeting guests and eyeing her presence, and she doesn't seem to notice. An employee enters the room with pizzas and sandwich platters and the mood lightens as the kids start to eat food and chat. I've stopped stewing about the a-hole kid and I'm watching my sister enjoy her party while I stuff my face with questions pizza. I see someone enter the room out of the corner of my eye and my temper flares as I see the entitled kid has returned and is reaching for a sandwich from the platter. I reach out and slap his hand away. Dude, what the heck? Get away from our food. My mum said I could join this party. I'm hungry. He pushes an actual party guest aside and continues to reach for food. Listen, kid, your mum does not get to say you can join this party. Get out. The entitled kid starts to respond, but an employee walks in to see how the food is tasting. The entitled kid sees her and runs from the room. My mum says to the employee, that kid keeps trying to join our party. Would you be able to find his parents and get it to stop? Absolutely. I will take care of it. She leaves the room after informing us that Chucky will be arriving shortly to dance with the birthday girl. The huge creepy mouse shows up shortly after the employee leaves and everyone but me leaves the party room to go dance by the stage. I could hear happy birthday being sung while I played on my phone. Thinking the room was empty, the entitled kid ran in and grabbed a piece of pizza and a handful of tokens. Dude, what the heck? I told you to get the heck out of here. The entitled kid turned around, shocked to see me, gave me the finger and ran out with pizza and tokens i had had enough i called my mum back into the room and told her that the entitled kid had stolen from us again she was annoyed she motioned for the same employee while i stalked out of the room to find the entitled kid's mum there were about 10 families in the restaurant at that time and i asked each one if they had a son that was bothering our party no one claimed the entitled kid Thinking that was odd and unable to find the kid, I headed back to the party room to my mum and the employee. The employee said, we cannot seem to locate the boy's parent and he cannot leave without an adult. My manager called the police. We have a problem with parents leaving their young kids here unattended for us to babysit because they know kids can't leave without matching hand stamps. I started to tell my mum that I couldn't find the entitled kid, but then I saw him on the dance floor, pushing my sister away from Chucky so he could dance next to him. My sister fell on her butt and started crying. Son of a bee. I'm extremely protective of my sister and I ran over there and grabbed the kid by the arm to yell at him for hurting her. As soon as I touched him, a hand grabbed my shoulder and spun me around. The entitled mum had returned in time to see me grab her kid. What the heck do you think you're doing? Don't grab my kid. My mum and the employee ran over. Don't grab my kid. Your kid has been disturbing our birthday party this entire time. Stealing food and tokens from us. The entitled mum huffed. I told him he could join the party. What's one more kid? You racist people are all the same. Not wanting a little black kid around your party. The employee and creepy mouse tried to intervene, stepping between the mums. Mom, you are not supposed to leave your child unattended here. You can't just leave the building. He's been disturbing other guests and now he's pushed his little girl. My son is the one who's being abused here i saw this big kid assault him i will sue this entire place for harassment if you don't give me some kind of compensation racist freaking restaurant you are all racist black people have a right to be here the same as you all mom you can be here but you have to stay with your child my manager had to call the police because we couldn't find you and your son was left there alone you will call the police seriously
honestly, he wasn't even alone for that long. He was with the birthday party. It's not like he wasn't being watched. My mum replied, he was not with our party. He was disturbing our party and stealing from us. The employee tries to defuse the situation. Listen, I will tell my manager to cancel the police and you can all stay. As long as you reimburse these people for the stolen items and do not leave your son alone again. I ain't given them anything. They have a lot. They can spare some for my kid. He's been good all week and he deserves some fun. My mum just wanted them to go away so that we could get back to our party. Listen, she doesn't have to reimburse us. Just stay away from the party room so we can get back to my daughter's birthday. The entitled mum scowled at my mum. Your party is stupid and racist anyway. She grabbed her kid and walked away. The employee apologized and came back with another bucket of tokens to compensate us for the ones that were stolen and we assumed the issue was resolved. My sister perked up when my mum started to hand tokens out to the kids and soon everyone scattered to play games. We were halfway through the party and I was looking forward to going home. I cannot tolerate butthole kids for very long. 15 minutes passed quietly with no further action from the entitled kid or the entitled mum. So I grabbed some tokens and headed off to play a zombie shooting game that I like. Gotta love killing zombies. I saw the entitled kid bugging the party kids for tokens But the parents were with their children as they played games and they all told him to buzz off Minutes later while i'm battling the undead the entitled kid runs by with a brightly wrapped box and joins his mum in a booth by the window That little effer had actually stolen one of my sister's freaking presents And he was starting to open it while his mum sat and watched I ran over to him and by then he had the package unwrapped and was scowling at the contents It's a freaking doll I don't want this. I want something better. Go and get another one then. I reached them and snatched the doll from the entitled kid. This is my sister's present. How the heck do you think you can go in there and open her presents? There are a lot of presents in there and you've all been very rude to the entitled kid. He can have a present if he wants one. Go and get another one, entitled kid. You don't want a stupid doll. No, he cannot go and get another one. These do not belong to him. The entitled kid takes off towards the party room and I look at the mum before taking off after him. Seriously, you are seriously going to let him go grab another one? Unfrickin' believable. I ran after the kid while the entitled mother continued to call me a racist and found him grabbing a present. That wasn't the worst part though. My sister's cake had been tossed on the floor by the table and was a chocolate heap of mess. I grabbed the present from the entitled kid, pushed him out of the room and panicked. My sister was going to be so upset to see her cake on the floor. Forgetting the entitled kid for a second, I flagged down the employee, told her what happened and she promised to have another cake on the table before the party guests came back another employee quickly came in to clean up the mess and true to her word another cake was on the table before my sister returned the employee said she was going to kick the entitled kid and his entitled mother out and left my sister and friends returned to the room 10 minutes later for cake and presents I was still fuming and so was my mum when I told her what the entitled kid had just done. But they were being kicked out so we decided to let it go. My sister had no idea what had happened and even though the doll was not wrapped, she was thrilled to receive it. She opened her presents and everyone ate cake without incident and the party was finally winding down. There was only one more thing for her to do. This Chuck E. Cheese had a ticket blaster, a tube the kid stands in and blasts of air shoot tickets in the air around the kid and they get to keep whatever they can grab in a certain amount of time. This was part of our party package and my sister was really looking forward to it. We all gathered by the blaster and my sister was going in when the entitled kid and his entitled mum showed up out of nowhere. EK went to push my sister aside and try to get into the tube. My kid gets to go in there first since you've all been so dang mean to him. Mom, you were told to leave. This is for the birthday kid only. I'm going to have to alert my manager if you do not take your kid and leave immediately. But the entitled kid said, start this thing up. I want the tickets. He tried to close the door while my sister stood just in the doorway, confused. My mum grabbed her as the kid tried to shut the door on her. Start it up right now so we can get some tickets. You are all some serious racers here. We're gonna sue all of you. Start the effing machine up already. I want some tickets. And no, he didn't say effing, he said the real word. The employee radioed for her manager to come and help her. We're going to call the police again, mom, if you don't leave. 
believe you are trespassing. Like heck I am. I'm a customer same as these people. My kid deserves to get tickets. It's not fair that the girl gets to do it and he doesn't. She doesn't even look old enough to be in there. Finally, the manager shows up and tells the entitled mum that he has called the police again and they are on their way. The kid refused to exit the ticket blaster tube and was yelling obscenities at everyone, including the small kids. The parents of those kids took their kids back to the party room to get away from the scene and my sister went with them, crying again. Me and my mum stared down the entitled mum, telling her to get her brat and leave, which just made her madder. Go ahead and call the dang police. She called us a few choice names before deciding to grab her kids and leave before the cops arrived the entitled kid was screaming at her calling her names because she was making him leave without going in the ticket blaster the manager followed behind them to make sure they left and they were finally gone about dang time said my mum. my sister came back out had a blast in the ticket blaster and managed to grab a special ticket worth 2,000 tickets that made her happy and all past issues were quickly forgotten by her and her party guests they picked out overpriced toys at the ticket counter we packed up the food and presents and got ready to leave all in all the kids managed to have a good time me and my mom not so much the manager returned to our group and was angry as he told us that someone hmm wonder who had smeared poop on the walls of the boys bathroom and an employee had to clean it up oh disgusting chucky e. cheese was kind enough to reimburse us for the total cost of the party food cake and tokens they apologized for not handling the situation better and said that the entitled mum and her bratty kid were permanently banned from the location it would have been satisfying to watch the entitled mum get arrested but oh well we went back to that location a few times over the years and have never had another problem thanks for reading oh wow what a story uh, I just feel so bad for that innocent kid, you know. Why does one guy have to ruin someone's birthday? I just don't get it. Well, that was an absolute behemoth of a story. If you've made it this far into the video, comment Ticket Blaster below and let's see how many Ticket Blaster comments there are. It'll be funny to see what people think of the comments if they don't get this far into the video. Given your size, mom, I'm sure you're still hungry. The waiter to my entitled adoptive mother. So this took place on one of my biggest, most eventful days of my life, my graduation day no this did not happen recently so you can rest assured that she no longer has any holds of me or any ties with me okay here's the story on my graduation day it was hot and boring for those who were not going to receive any qualifications or any degrees the relatives and friends who came to attend the ceremony would act as a standby for these graduates to go in and come out they would be there as a personal staff i guess to help out carrying all the things that our graduation gowns could not it was hot and the graduates were the only people with black gowns so sunbeaming and black gowns equals certain people would have passed out for sure anyway that was not the point of the story so while we were waiting for it to be my faculty's turn to go into the auditorium my family my adoptive mother father my grandmother my aunt my cousin the photographer were complaining that they were hungry including the photographer i proposed to them an idea that i would pay for everyone's lunch because they all were there for me i graduated early so i could work a little but i was not earning much since i was only three months into the job i would be earning about 500 dollars per month and give the rest of the family about 66 dollars on this day i was left with 236 dollars therefore everyone suggested a cheap restaurant nearby so we wouldn't have to travel far or didn't have to waste my money not my adoptive mother obviously she had a brilliant idea op took me once to this one exotic restaurant it has the local food too everyone gets to eat anything they like i did not object i couldn't think of a proper place to eat so what Whatever she said plus the he i just went whatever with it so she took us to this israeli place that i would often go with my friends and my cousin my family went in and they were weirded out at first given the prices of the food but it was okay with me they were there for me and this was the least i could do as a thank you to them it might not have been the best idea to eat there given the prices but since it was a thank you gesture i just let them decide what to eat once we sat down the waiter that was super familiar with me came with the menu everyone looked through and just ordered one dish per person that was fine with me everyone seemed to order what they liked and i was pleased with that even the photographer said thank you he was a family friend so basically i considered him an uncle anyway everyone seemed to be pleased with everything except my adoptive mother well this is great and all but it's an experience we should order more are you gonna order more and be able to finish of course i would it's your day we should celebrate okay sure so she asked the waiter for the menu again you know with the snappy fingers she looked through the menu and ordered most things that were exotic 
exotic and pricey. The photographer just looked at me and asked if I could afford it. I told him not to worry. As long as everything gets eaten, I would be happy regardless. I mean, that was a blatant lie. I wanted to hit my adoptive mother with a plate. The orders finally came. They were a bunch of food my other family members wouldn't eat. They usually eat the local food, but this was on my adoptive mother's plate, literally. She had to eat all of it, but of course not. She knew me and my cousin were the only people who liked exotic food. So did she finish? F no. Oh my god, I am so stuffed. Do you plan on finishing the rest? No, but you can eat the rest, you know. Yeah, I am full with just my plates. Why did you order more if you knew you wouldn't finish it? Come on, be a good host. We're here for you. Don't spoil it for everyone. Are you serious? She knew I couldn't eat the rest because I would have to be waiting in the auditorium for about five hours without bathroom breaks. The uniform I had on was with a belt that had to be on tights, otherwise my skirt would fall off. If I ate a lot, I wouldn't be able to breathe, and she knew all of this but still suggested that I should eat everything up anyway. So I asked the waiter to pack the food up for us. He asked if the food was up to everyone's satisfaction. Everybody else said yes, except for my adoptive mother. Yeah, the food today was not that great. Try harder next time. You're smart enough for someone from your village. His eyes went livid, I swear. The dude knew me because I often went there and he would always treat me with kindness. He looked at me and back at her. I had to apologize for this woman's behavior and he said, I cannot believe you didn't finish everything, mom. No need to be modest. I judge from your size and I'm sure you're still hungry. My cousin heard that and choked on her water. My grandmother heard it and pretended not to. My uncle just giggled. My aunt aunt just looked at the waiter in disbelief. My adoptive father nodded in agreement to the waiter and my adoptive mother was just in shock. Hey, congratulations to the new graduate here. I will give you a discount today. The waiter said this and I was so grateful for that. Not only because one, the discount saved my butt because it was about 150 for our plates, but he deducted the price down to $90. And two, the waiter went savage on my adoptive mother and I could not be any more grateful for that. We left there after Afterwards and everyone was full. I had more food to take home and she instructed that I carry them since she ordered them for me, but lady, I paid for them. My cousin saw it and told me not to worry. She helped out with the rest. The rest of the day went okay. My entitled adoptive mother complained about anything that she could complain about. Everyone else congratulated me once the ceremony was done. Apart from my entitled mom who said, can we just go home now? My feet hurt. I feel sick. That waiter totally ruined my day. Then we went home and she still complained anyway, the end. (laughs) Oh my God. Well, all I can say is shout out to that waiter. If you see someone being entitled, you're more than justified to put them in their place. And that's exactly what he did. Moving on to our next story. Now this one is actually posted by one of my patrons on r slash redditor yt. If you want to become a patron and get access to lots of perks, for example, having your name at the end of every single one of my videos, the link is in the description and in the pinned comment. Entitled mum tries to ruin my vacation and calls me 80 plus times when I don't answer the phone. Gets upset because I was ignoring her. Hello again, Reddit gang. So a few weeks ago, I posted a story about my job at a college call center when an entitled parent called and screamed and swore at me and my supervisor for almost half an hour. Recently, I remembered what happened to me when I went on vacation in February of 2018. This story will be somewhat vague when it comes to details like the last one, but I'll do my best to remember what I can. Also, not much swearing, but there was some yelling involved and a whole lot of entitlement. Oh, and by the way, my mum's name is actually karen so you know this is going to be bad so i had recently had a pretty rough semester at school where i got seriously injured in a public transit accident and was confined to a wheelchair for a few months while i recovered i basically fell way behind in all my schoolwork and never properly finished submitting a request to be withdrawn from the courses due to medical reasons and hardship so i pretty much failed the semester and decided to take the next one off to attend a blind and low vision service center training program to better assist me in my daily living activities. I suffer from several visual impairments that hinder my eyesight and cause me to wear glasses with extremely strong corrective lenses in order to see anything, mostly out of my right eye with no presence of any sort of peripheral vision at all. While I was in this service center training, my mother had planned out a huge cruise she would take around a majority of Europe to celebrate her 50th birthday. But she wouldn't be bringing me along with her. The many excuses she used included, I'd be in school, it'd be too expensive, 
relative, I needed a passport, etc. As a bit of petty revenge, I decided while she was gone that it would be a great idea to go on my own solo vacation to clear my mind. By doing the one thing I remembered from nearly three years prior that made me the happiest man alive. By visiting the happiest place on earth, the Disneyland Resort in California. It would be the first time I would ever take a whole trip by myself. Not counting the time I flew alone to Puerto Rico when I was 13 to be with my entire extended family for Christmas. Just after my grandfather passed away, all the times I've gone on trips lasting longer than a few days within the same state I live, since I don't really consider them vacations. I basically planned everything out in literally less than a week, and I would be gone for an entire week to enjoy everything about Disney all by myself. It would be an expensive financial investment, but do wonders for my long-term sanity. Anyways, enough boring backstory. You're here for the entitlements, or at least I hope you are, so let's begin. The first few days of my trip were wonderful. My departure flight was diverted to Las Vegas for an hour due to weather slash visibility concerns, and I got a free lunch courtesy of the captain, while the rest of the flight crew did their best to keep us entertained for the short time we were grounded, which I must say they did an excellent job at. When I did get to California, everything went as smooth as butter for the first few days I was there. I called my mother after getting to my hotel room to check in and let her know everything was going good. And then things went south in a heartbeat. On the fourth or fifth day I was there, my friend flew in to join me for the rest of my trip as the flights were still very cheap and it wouldn't cost me anything to add him to my hotel since I was paying for the room as a whole and not getting charged per person. For some reason or another, when my mum tried to reach me for God knows what, I remember speaking with her and arguing over the phone about something. And then I put my phone on do not disturb since I didn't want to deal with it. Lo and behold, about 30 minutes later, I checked my phone to find she had called me about 85 times or something like that, but I specifically remember the number was higher than 74 and lower than 100 and left me something like 10 to 20 voicemails basically saying, OP, call me back. I need to talk to you. I called her back later that day and the conversation went something like this. My entitled mum said in her broken English and Hispanic accents, why the heck didn't you answer the phone to me? I get worried something happened to you. Because I'm on vacation and I told you I didn't want to be bothered unless it was an emergency. But it is an emergency. I'm your mother and you need to answer the phone when I call you. I even called Alan, my friend, not his real name, to see if he knew where he was, but he said you know nothing and you go to the Disney and leave him at the hotel. Well, I told him I wasn't buying a ticket and I had plans for the day, so I didn't want to screw those up. I made dining reservations for a bunch of different restaurants for a majority of my trip, so I wouldn't have to worry about waiting forever for a table, and so I could try and plan out a schedule that worked for me. My friend, who was a choosing beggar, that story will come later, tried to follow me into the park by scanning my ticket on his phone, and he almost got caught and nearly got me banned from the parks. But the security guard understood and just gave me a warning about keeping my AP under lock and key. I no care. Why the heck do you not answer the phone? You hate me or something? No. My entitled mom starts being overdramatic. Oh, I am the worst mother on the planet and I should not be alive. I deserve to be dead than alive. Mom, stop. Don't say things like that. You know I love you, but you have to respect when I want some space. That's all. Whatever. I talk to you later. I need to calm down. Yes, you do. I'll talk to you later. Bye. By this point, when I hung up, Karen was basically crying and furiously upset with me, and I still don't understand why. We had argued some more and I hung up, after which she apologized later that week after trying to leave me alone the rest of the trip. Sorry this wasn't super long or drawn out like before, but as I said, I have a horrible memory and this was almost two years ago now, so I don't remember a lot about it. In case you're wondering, my trip was amazing and was a well-needed rest from the crazy life I live now. I've gone back two times since and look forward to going to Disneyland again very soon. My favorite part of this entire story is that your mum is actually called Karen. I don't know if you guys remember Andrew's previous story, but yeah, it just makes me laugh every time that your mum is actually called Karen. Anyway, it's clear from reading this that although your mum may be a little bit entitled, she still does love you and wants to know what's going on. I don't really blame her for calling you, but maybe not 85 times. Entitled mum and kid want Kindle, will lie, cheat, and steal for it. So if you can believe it, when I was in elementary school, the school had a scholastic funded reading contest every year. It was a readathon, donate 60 cents for every hour or page or something like that to your school and scholastic will match it. Now being the big brain low 
lone wolf I am I won the contest every single year by staying up all night reading and I was proud We now only have two out of five kindles remaining We lost one donated one and an entitled kid broke one So this is the fourth year of the contest people should know by now who the big reading dog is Tis I who reads chapter books and sleeps in class However, like a week before the contest i'm approached by this kid maybe in third grade i'm in fourth and he goes I'm gonna win the kindle this time. I'm confused and startled by a stranger approaching me and initiating communication Uh, i've read 27,000 pages you're going down. Oh cool. Well, i've read 34,000 you're nearly caught up The entitled kid is flustered. He didn't outread me. Uh, did I say 27,000? I meant 37,000 Okay, he storms off. I should say for context from one of the old score sheets I have over the course of a day I read anywhere from 1200 to 5,000 words my parents actually capped it so I didn't stay up too late that is dedication over the course of a week my score grows by roughly 13,000 I was cramming on Friday the winners are announced me first guy called Raj second the entitled kid is in third I go up to get my prize but the entitled kid's mum who also of course is entitled gets a firm grip on my arm the entitled mum who has a normal haircut but everything else from glasses to face screams karen sweetie is there anything you want to tell the judges before you go up thank thank you no about how much you read oh yeah i had fun no god dang it that you cheated you all cheated my mum intervenes no he worked very hard for this he deserves it raj says as well hey did you just call us liars look my entitled son read so much and yet you still say your kids read more impossible more likely you cheated and said you read more than you really did no my mum actually capped my school so i wouldn't read too much yeah and my mum only let me read three hours a day the entitled kid said i could couldn't even read that much and i filled out the form wrong so you must be lying mummy these are lying boys i told you about who keep stealing my kindle the principal comes over because of the commotion what's going on here the scholastic worker says well the kid there me won first place if their name is blank right the principal nods but this boy here gestures at the entitled kid says he must have cheated which is bs because i have frequently had to take books away from my son because my son stayed up too late reading the principal takes the box with the kindle so this is yours then i reach out to grab it and the entitled mum's wrinkled fist slams it into the floor i'm just a nine-year-old who's just been denied a toy i worked for a month to get so of course i begin to cry my principal and mum are in shock what look what you've done you've made my entitled kid upset he's usually so happy but because of your ignorance i had to break his new toy to teach you a lesson i want that kindle my mum's internal binary code turns from green to red a feminine robot voice says lady mode activation confirmed did you just disrespect my child by damaging my property the entitled mum is shocked at not being the only entitled mum excuse me you heard me now pay for the dang 600 dollars tablet you just broke the entitled mum's gears start turning about what had just happened come on son let's go don't you dare bit stop i've seen enough mum just let the other mum go scholastic worker can you give op another tablet no sorry kid if you want a tablet take it up with them she points at the entitled duo so i do i pester that kid every day if he has my money or my tablet and eventually he becomes my friend a eh? i never got any compensation my mum didn't press charges all of this really happened except for the dialogue which is an over dramatic approximation how on earth am i supposed to know what i said back in elementary school well uh, this was an interesting story to start with for sure i'm not completely sure it's all 100 percent accurate but it did happen a long time Time ago so fair enough the thing that does make me think that is that he said that the kindle was six hundred dollars now i know that kindles are not that much money so what i want you guys to do i want you to let me know in the comments do you think this story was real or maybe a little bit dramatized let me know moving on to our next story now i've quickly looked this one over already and this is absolutely insane my sister's a what a rumor that destroyed my sister started by an entitled grandma and her entitled family before people say this did not happen it did and it cost my sister a lot of self-esteem my sister passed in october of 2019 due to a medical issue and an overdose of medication that she mixed up she broke her back in 2002 causing her no end of pain and endless surgeries between 1993 to 1999 my sister was doing modeling 
working for various companies in Colorado and Texas. She was actually told in her junior year that she would be suspended from her uppity and rather boring high school in Texas, but she did it anyway because to her it was just a hobby. Now, from 1996 to 97, she did some really cool commercials that she made a lot of money on. I was really proud of her and so I thought her friends could be too, but I couldn't be more wrong. After a commercial that she did, the money she got she put away in a college fund. She also made sure I ended up with some too. I didn't find out until my senior year of high school. We also got to be extras in an upcoming miniseries where I got a chance to meet Stephen King. Wow. We arrived at our high school pretty jazzed when it started near mid-August. I told a few friends about it and we kind of just made sure my sister knew she was awesome. But one of her friends whose parents were a little too religious did not think so. It all started with a complaint my sister made about a fellow model, we will call them E, that kind of got the ball rolling. She told our mum that E was doing heroin and she did not want to work with him in the future. She also caught E who was staying with us between shoots stealing from us, namely me because I had some rare things. My sister also complained about him to the wrong person, her then friend entitled girl during a sleepover. As we started the school year, my sister did a big commercial and she showed up in new clothes. Well, so did I. Anyway, it all started with our lockers being searched. My sister and I switched lockers because we were close to each other and I complained I was too short for a top locker and she was way too tall for a short one. We told the office we switched and it was okay. Well, that morning I came in and found my locker open with my school bag and binders all on the floor. We were told to go to the office and explain why our lockers were switched. Apparently, no one told the school administrators we did it and no one made note of the switch. I was also informed I had to remove all my Sailor Moon pictures from my binders as they were not complying with school whatever it was. I requested to call my mother which was allowed while my sister was taken into a separate office. Okay, look, my mum is entitled. No ifs or buts about it. She was furious and we were pulled out for the day. Apparently, my sister's entitled girlfriend told people that the modelling gigs were all lies and my sister was selling drugs. Well, my friends and hers were all confused because they knew my sister modelled since 7th grade and were wondering why the entitled girl was spreading all these rumours. One of my friends who was in cheerleading with the entitled girl confronted her. Apparently, what my friend told me was pretty much this. If she's really a model, she'd have tutors and not be here in school with us. She's either a prostitute or dealing in drugs. I was floored because both my friend and I had seen the commercials and also how much work my sister did during the summer for these gigs. The entitled girl confronted me while I was working as a student aide in the special ed department. She asked me how much my sister made per gig and how many other models she knew. All these questions I did not know. Her modeling gigs were during times I was either in clubs at school or babysitting my neighbor's kid. All I did was turn around and ask, so when will I get my copy of Interview with a Vampire back from you? It's been three months. The entitled girl told me her father had destroyed it and said it was proof enough that he could call CPS on my mother. She walked away and I realized how screwed this was and told my sister who said she'd handle it. She couldn't handle it. The damage this entitled girl did was done. My sister was branded a slut, whore and worse by several people who had no idea what was going on. She also turned down three shoots, though one was with the other Model E, so she was happy to be rid of him. By then, he'd started to stalk her off and on, calling her and demanding to go on dates. I have another story for that. The entitled girl made the problems worse when she said I was in on my sis being on drugs, which I just couldn't believe someone would say that. This was proven false when several friends of mine and my sister backed us up. One of the people backing me up was someone I thought was a bully. Finally, a headshot was found in my sister's locker that proved she was a model. In fact, I was forced back into my top locker and take the picture to my door, so when I opened it, people would see it. The entitled girl demanded I take it down or be suspended, but I wasn't violating any rules, so I demanded her to try. The entitled girl was soon called out, and many of my sister's friends were angry enough to demand she was banned from cheerleading. The captain of the squad actually got the approval because this entitled girl caused enough drama. But this girl's entitled friend decided to actually demand us to place my sister in rehab. In fact, she demanded that my mum donate all my sister's earned money from modelling to their church. I remember this phone call because the entitled girl's father couldn't be bothered to come to our house to confront us. He decided to call us. He also threatened CPS, saying that because I was special ed, I should be in a special school. My mum was yelling so loudly over the 
the phone, I swear you could hear her down the street. By now, my sister was crying nearly every day and transferred to a new school. It ended up in the news in 1999 for bad reasons. My sister's self-esteem hit an all-time low and she did end up smoking because of it. She did some modeling gigs and started dating the other model, E, much to her dislike of the jerk. After all of this, the entitled girl got her way. My sister was no longer at the school for the rest of the year. I was okay when I was bullied, but I was not okay when it was my sister. I got into a few arguments with the entitled girl and all around wanted to smack the absolute poop out of her. We moved soon after before my senior year. I was annoyed, but it was for my sister's sake. What sucked was that the entitled girl found me when we moved back at a local community college and begged me not to tell her policeman buddies what she did to my sister. I told her fine, but I told her one thing she had to obey. If she showed up at my anime club, I would have her escorted out by the police and I would file a restraining order. And since I was at the college way before her, she would have to drop out. She complied, but called me a lady for saying that she was banned from the anime club, which she liked. I plainly told her that I don't give a dang about what she likes. She hurt my sister and it was my turn to poo on the entitled girls parade. I said this to her before parting. Party is over, princess. You're in my territory now. Have a nice day. Karma is a lady. She never got to join the FBI because guess who was really doing drugs? It wasn't my sister. Now, if you have any doubts about how long this story was, ask. Don't assume it's fake. When I bore witness to my sister's self-esteem going rock bottom, I still hear her crying and asking how she did anything wrong. She just made one lousy friend and it all came crashing down. Well, um, this story was certainly an interesting one. We've had a, we've had a couple of interesting stories in this video. This one seemed to jump all over the place. Like one minute we were doing modeling, then we were in school, then we were talking about anime clubs. I didn't really get it, but it was quite entertaining. But yeah, as I always say, it does suck the effect that entitled people can have on innocent people like your sister. Anyway, guys, that is going to be the end of this one. If you are still watching, you are an absolute legend. I can't really believe you're still here, but fair play to you. Now, I did actually make a very similar video to this a long time ago, back when I had maybe 20,000 subscribers. It's on the screen right now if you want to check it out. A lot like this one, it is a compilation of my best ever stories, but it's from a long time ago, so the stories are, of course, different. But yeah, other than that, thank you so much for watching all the way through. You're an absolute legend, and I will see you tomorrow with a normal video.